Ever since I got my Mac Mini M4 Pro, I've had a few questions for myself, which is what happens when I run out of the ports that are available? There's really not that many. And also, why do I have to put all of my data on the internal storage? Wouldn't it be great if I had some external storage that I could go ahead and put that on that was also lightning fast? Well, as time has gone on, sure enough, I've been filling up a bunch of ports. I've got a bunch of USB hubs adapted to it, and I'm still putting all of my VMs that are huge directly on the internal storage. So that is where the pull twaf boom hub comes in. All right, this is the Pultwop USB-C hub for the Mac Mini M4 M4 Pro. They did send it to me for free. However, this is my review and they didn't have any influence on my review of it at all. So again, this is a USB-C hub, so not Thunderbolt. So you're gonna expect USB-C level performance coming out of it. It does have that nice little notch though, which is awesome. It has HDMI, it has USB 2.0, which we'll talk about in a bit, SD and audio jack, and of course that SSD and VME input. So let's go ahead and open this up. And again, this matches the color of the Mac Mini. There's a bunch of these hubs out there, and this one is pretty nice looking. It has that nice little cutout over there, and then it has the uh, input for the SSD. So if we take a look in the box, we also have some thermal tape in here, which will be for the hard drive. We have the instructions, and we have all the cords and cables that you need, and the screwdriver, which is nice with all the little screws for that hard drive that you're going to put in. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at all the ports that are on here. So we have two USB 2.0 on the front. We have an SD card and a micro USB card reader on the front. And on the back, we have another USB 2.0, an audio jack, and HDMI uh, 4K at 60 hertz. And then this is the uh, actual USB-C port as well. And of course, that nice little notch. So I am going to put in a hard drive into here. I do actually have one sitting around, which is nice. So all you need to do is just use the little screwdriver provided and then open this puppy up. Uh, it's actually really quite easy to do. If you've never done one before, they have instructions online, but you can also follow along. It supports four different sizes of the NVMe uh, SSDs, and they have these little screws basically to allow you to put them in place. So here's the Samsung card that I have. So all I'm gonna do is just put that in a 45 degree angle, tighten it up, and then take that thermal tape and just set it right on top for heat dispersion as well, which is nice. There's a few pieces on there of plastic, and I got to do is take those off and then put the screws back on, and you're totally like good to go. That's it. All right, let's take a look at this up close. So it has a little resting spot on the top, and it leaves a gap over here, which is nice for air dispersion, as we can see on top of it, and the colors line up pretty good. And what we can see is that you can just plug in the USB-C cable right into the Thunderbolt in the back. And that's going to power everything. Obviously, the two HDMI that you now have out can do two dual monitors. Of course, you have access to that power button. And then you have access to all of the different USB 2.0 hubs and the audio jack and SD card readers. So let's take a look here and let's go ahead and do a speed test here. Now, you should just be getting standard, basically, USB-C speeds. So here we can see we get about 1,000 or about a gig. Uh, per second of write and on our read we're going to also get about a gig ish or so this is an older drive i used it for many 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 years so speeds around you know nine eight hundred to a thousand here so we can see that going and we can kind of see the different things that it's telling us that we can do now comparatively obviously if i was to choose the internal hard drive of the mac it's going to be much much faster or if you had a thunderbolt right so i'm just going to select this you know download folder from my mac hard drive for example and if we select that and run the speed test here on the Blackmagic design, we're going to get, you know, almost four to five, six X speed, basically, which which makes sense. It's a it's not over USB-C. It's actually a really, really fast hard drive. Uh, if we look at the actual specs of my Samsung drive, we can see that, you know, I'm leaving a little room on the table, obviously. So if I was to put this on an actual Thunderbolt attachment, we're going to get faster reads and writes. Uh, but, you know, right here, we're, we're kind of just making that sacrifice for the hub design. Now, when you go to the Pultwop website or Amazon, which I'll put a link to in the show notes below, you can see more information about it. The big thing here is that they claim no Wi-Fi issues because of USB 2.0. They say 3.0 is the one that actually interferes with it. Um, so that's really fascinating. Uh, and we'll test that out. Here's the different sizes of NVMe that you can put in. Here's that 4K, the notch design. And then it gives you really detailed information of how they believe, at least, or they say, it's going to impact the Wi-Fi antenna. 
So I'm on Ethernet right now and I ran my speed test. I should get around a gig or so, um, but I'm getting about 600 on Ethernet. Let's go into here. I'm going to disable my Ethernet. Let me make that inactive. And then let's flip on the Wi-Fi over here. And when I go ahead and flip on the Wi-Fi, uh, I have multiple networks. I've tested this on a 2.4 gigahertz direct, a 5 gigahertz direct. This is my 5 gigahertz direct right here. And I've also tested on a mix and pretty much all the same results. So I'm just going to go and run it again. And what we can see is now that I'm back on Wi-Fi, we're pretty much rock solid uh, in this case based on my fast.com test. Okay, so it's been a few days and I wanted to give my full review now that I've been using it, not only for the internal storage, but also the other ports as well. So let's talk overall the design. The design of the pull top is nice. I think the colors are spot on. I like that there's a little padding here that kind of slides and kind of grips the Mac mini in place. I of course love the notch design. That's really nice. On the bottom, I didn't point it out earlier, but there are little feet here. And the nice thing about that is it's not going to slide around when you set it down. So that is a really nice touch. Uh, beyond that, it's a standard hub, right? It's nice weight. You know, it's got a nice design. It's got a nice feel to it. Got a nice knock uh, on it. So overall, positive, nice, thin colors are on. Let's talk about functionality of this thing. One, as you saw, it's USB-C speeds for transferring files. I've been putting my VM images on there. I've been putting my GitHub uh, source code on there and Docker images and things like that on there. And that seems to work fairly well, no issues. And remember, it is an external drive, so you might have some funkiness if you're trying to store like you know, OneDrive or different uh, Dropbox type syncing things. Some of them don't let you do external drive, so be aware of that, or it's a little bit more set up in the process there as well. Um, besides that, the speeds have all been great, you know, as you saw previously. Let's talk about the ports and functionality. So uh, obviously on the back, we have the HDMI coming out. That's nice if you want two different devices. That is a nice perk. Uh, headphone, headphone, that's nice. I just have mine in the front uh, uh, coming that I normally use. And then the real question is the USB 2.0. And I thought about this long and hard. And, you know, you have, you know, the USB 2.0 and there's multiple on here. There's three. And I actually have a hub that's USB-C to USB 3.0. And I thought about it. Well, what's actually plugged into that? And it's actually a bunch of USB 2.0 things like my little uh, Logitech adapter, for example, or keyboard uh, that's on there and other little devices. So I was able to move those over to this and then free up actual USB 3.0 um, uh, inputs, which are, is kind of nice in that regard. And then, of course, you also have the SD card and the micro SD card slot as well. And that all works great. I actually transferred the video I took over from my Insta360 uh, onto this, which worked great. So overall, you know, really good. Now, the question is, who is this for? This is anywhere between $80 to $100 based on where you buy it, uh, whether it be on Amazon, which I'll put a link below uh, to. And I think the answer is somebody that wants more ports. But more importantly, once that external hard drive with the NVMe on it, I think that's really key because it is integrated. It is really nice. Without that functionality, you can pick up a nice USB, uh, you know, 3.0 and USB-C uh, adapter for like 10 to 15 bucks, and you can just put it in the back, and you'll be good to go. So I'm not really sure if the hundred dollars is worth it for the integrated solution. That would be a bit much. Uh, same thing even with the HDMI, right? You could just buy an HDMI adapter. I think the question comes down to, okay, if I'm going to spend $50 on an adapter that has all the gizmos and gadgets, could I just get something like this? You know, and then it gives you the flexibility and option to add the SSD in the future. So I think overall, good value, good design, Wi-Fi works, all the ports work, solid design for the price compared to a lot of the other hubs out there. So that's my review. I give it a thumbs up. I'm going to put it right back over on my Mac mini and I'm going to be using it just like I would any other little hub or adapter. I'm definitely going to be using the internal storage. I'm really excited about that. Probably put that SSD to work. All right. I do want to thank Pultwop for sending me this. Like I said earlier, they sent it to me completely for free. Of course, this is an unbiased review. It's me actually using it uh, here uh, at my home setup and how I record my videos every single day. So they didn't have any influence on my review, my input, my output, anything like that at all. Anyways, if you found this video and you like these type of reviews, let me know in the comments below. And if you have other hubs that you like, let me know as well. I'll put links to this on Amazon and to their website uh, so you can go and check it out yourself. That's what I'm going to do for this video. So until next time, I'm James. Thanks for watching.